On this episode of The View from Jamestown, we recap a busy trade show travel season. We're back from the coding show. We're back from NP. Nice to be back and follow up on some of the new meetings and conversations from the last couple weeks. Checking in on what's going on with the economy and how business is these days. A couple hot products to talk about. And uh, the second half of the episode, we have a few of our live conversations recorded down at the coding show. So stay tuned for all that and more on The View from Jamestown. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. This is episode 108. This is the May 2024 episode. This is the post all the major trade show episode, which is nice having it all behind us. Uh, We got a a slightly slimmed down crew today from my right to left. We have uh, VP of sales, AJ Petrarca, inside sales manager, Nicole Greenberg, and TCC president, Rob Roach. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Ben. Morning, Benny. Good morning. How are we all doing? Pretty well. Good. We're home. Yeah, a little yes. uh, allergy season, but <laughs> yeah. other than that, we're, we're good. Yeah, yep. it's nice so, to be home. That's why me and AJ are over here. We're trying to, I don't know if you can catch allergies. No, you can't. No, you, it, no, so. you can't. Uh, um, how's uh, how's everything going? Things are good. Good. Happy to be yeah. home yeah. after two weeks of travel back to back. Yeah. More yeah. like six weeks off and on. Pretty much more on than off, but true. Yeah, it's been it's been a busy busy run and. Uh, yeah, it's good to be home. Yeah, very much is. We uh, so we're kind of mid May now. We have the uh, you know obviously starting with the AFPM a good five six weeks ago, and then obviously have the uh, American Coding Show behind us, and then NPE which was last uh, last week also behind us. So nice to be home. Busy uh, busy couple weeks. Obviously, you know I think the coding shows every two years, and is every three years. So this was one of those magic years that it all lined up, and the shows were back to back. So especially if you exhibit, and even if you just attend both of them, it's a uh, it's a crazy back to back week, but um, two well attended shows, you know, two busy shows. Obviously, TCC had a, a booth at both of them. Um, you know, what would you think of the What you think of the coding show, AJP? I thought the coding show was really good. We we were um, we had a really good booth location. We had a lot of uh, a lot of good meetings. Ran into a few people that we didn't know were going to be there, so I think our booth helped with that. But yeah, I thought, the, I thought the coding show was really well attended. I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I definitely agree. Um, you know, the last one was 2022, and you still had definitely some COVID effects, and I think half the, not half, but maybe 20% of the um, hall was not sold and what, you know, definitely less well attended. So it was nice to see it all fully sold out again and pretty well attended. Yeah, the Asian contingent was there in a big way, both at ACS both and MPE. Yeah. yeah, even more than in the past, I think, even more than pre-COVID, they were they were there in a big way. Yep. Yep. Coco, thoughts on the coding show? Uh, no, I thought it was great. Um to mirror AJ's comments, it was, you know, very well attended. I think there were great meetings. Um we had a, you know, robust crew there and I think everyone made the most of it, um including, you know, the little podcast segments that yeah. you recorded. I thought that was a great little feature. Um and yeah, the <clears throat> the location was awesome as well. So, you know, there was a lot of traffic around it. And, um, yeah, that no, was overall fantastic. Yeah, our first uh, our first mobile podcast recording, courtesy of the Kettle Bottom guys. We had George down there. It was a lot of fun to grab some people and, and do that. So maybe mixing some of that more at, at future shows as well. But, um, yeah, it was a busy week. And then uh, we moved right from the coding show to NPE, which – you know in your head going into it it's a, a massive trade show and that it's you know the the size of the floor plan and things like that but until you actually get there you kind of forget the scale of it the, it's just freaking massive mm-hmm. so that was the first time that i attended the npe and when i walked in to even set up and and look at the setup i was like wow this is huge yeah. um and you don't realize the scale and magnitude of you know all of the you know the landscape of it until you get All there the halls, yeah, yeah it, it's incredible it's incredible how many mps do you think you've been to it's got to be like my fifth maybe yeah because we missed one with covid and then it's been or whatever every three yeah, i think we did is, so. yeah three or four before that yeah, yeah it started early 2000s yeah yeah we went we went to yeah probably oh two something like that i don't know if it lines up but somewhere around there yeah, I think yeah. is when we started so what do you think of this NP versus years prior? Obviously, I know it's been six years since we've had one, but the um, prior MPEs we never had like the lunches and dinners and meetings and things like that. That yep. we definitely had a lot of the after parties. Um, we were maybe um, just getting into the plastics additives industry a little bit too much, uh, a little bit you know, in the early two thousands, and now we're definitely a staple in it. 
so as far as like business and doing business and and having meetings and lunches and dinners and wow it was you know a lot and we got some bit we got some work done booth location was horrible <laughs> i mean it was yeah. absolutely couldn't have been and what happened was we 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 had a fight with npe uh, when covid hit they wanted to keep our money we said you can't keep our money and I think they got back at us or something by giving us a really horrible booth location. So it was almost like money we should have never even spent. Yep. So um, so I'm Irish. I won't forget that NPE. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll probably go back there, but we'll just walk or something like that. But, I mean, yep. if you're going to be going to, 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 to Nicole's point, that big of a show, you better have a prime booth location. The people that did said they were slammed. Well, you made a good point too. Like when we started going to like the NP, for example, you know, being a newer company in the space and really want to get your name out there, it's a different focus versus now when you're a little bit more mature in the industry and it's less about grabbing a bunch of new people out of the aisle and new business stuff, but it's more so, you know, catching up with existing customers and business partners. And this, you know, obviously you're always trying to grab new customers and new leads and things like that. But it, the the focus of the show kind of switches, like you said, with a lot more pre pre uh, pre setup stuff and everything. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely gonna get, you know, you're gonna get business easier from your current customers but uh, you know i'm always looking for that excitement of the new opportunity and i i think we got um because of our location we got a little bit gypped on that mm -hmm. but i think the emphasis on walking the show too everybody was, did walk the show yeah. i mean everybody got around like there was a lot of business cards flying around and things like that but yeah i mean you know we just didn't have the bulk that we've had in the past so yeah I, I think as far as business goes yeah i think it was good yeah. it was good yeah yeah and i think it's it's interesting being at these shows and then there's i feel there's so many sort of smaller kind of boutique shows if you will that are popping up here and there so it's i think it's interesting looking at the value and the scale of like a coding show or an np like obviously we do a lot of the chemicals of america and the sakma show and the adhesive show and we'll do the fertilizer conference like some of these things that are much easier you can you know you, you ship a couple boxes and it's all of three thousand dollars to exhibit you know like the chemicals of america for example that's also has 1200 people and you know it's packed the whole time and things like that it's mm. i don't know it's it, you, you probably see it better than a lot of people because we're at both sides of the shows um you know whether or not some of these massive scale shows are entirely worth it or if some of these smaller more targeted shows are are better for it yeah i mean we have to be at both right like we have to be at the M like the mpe is such a huge yep. space right there's machinery and there's all polymers and what we do is a pretty small piece of the overall pie you yep. know we're at the chemicals america show you know there's a lot more you know a lot more opportunity but a lot smaller pool of people if that yep. makes sense so yep. um yeah, we have to be at we have to be at both, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. You know, it'll be interesting to see how some of these shows kind of move forward now that we're kind of past COVID, and you know, people realize that business happened just fine without some of these trade shows happening and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how some of these shows. You know, the next coding show will be two years from now, and then NP obviously three years from now. It'll be uh, interesting to see what how the attendance is at future ones, and if they stay as big as they are. Or you see any shifts there? Is it me or does it feel like people just? felt like COVID ended six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we've been traveling for three years now, you know, but like the last six months, it's yeah. like all these people just started showing back up. It's yeah. like, where'd you come from? Well, you know, <laughs> working from home, not traveling. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, now everybody's back, you know, it's like even like at NPE, they had the little, the, you know, the Chinese sections, you know, even the Chinese showed back up. I mean, AFPM, we didn't have a big, you know, Asian contingent, but they were at Codings, they were oh, at NPE, so. you know, so, yeah, it's really weird. It's like people are just catching up to the, like, there's this, like, desire to travel all of a sudden, you know. Yep. I, I, I don't know how to, if it has to do with COVID or just budgeting or what, but a lot of people out there all of a sudden. Yeah, the, the Asian contingent was massive like i feel like we were talking about in prior years like there'd be kind of a, a you know sponsored section where it made it easy for them to have booths and things like that and npe or coatings or both both you know you mm. definitely notice that at npe though right um you know this year they had like a china section and then a separate taiwan section and japan section like it was much mm -hmm. it was clearly much bigger than it's been in prior years which was which was interesting it's obviously yeah. a big focus on i think the u.s market globally so definitely it was interesting um 
a lot of uh, a lot of buzzwords on a lot of booths, specifically uh, some sustainability buzzwords. Uh, not to not to downplay sustainability by any means, but obviously it's uh, something a lot of folks are, are focusing on. Um, it seemed like every booth just had random recycling, <laughs> sustainability, <laughs> yeah. uh, carbon. Like they just had words on their booth that yeah. just, you know none of them actually. Well, I can't say none of them do that stuff, but you know companies that aren't known to do things like that just had the branding of the words on the on their booth, which I kind of we were giggling about all week. I'm curious how much that actually drives traffic. I'm sure, you know, obviously we talked to a lot of people and it seems like a lot of people there were in supply chain and R and D and people focusing on new things and making things better. Like I'm, I'm curious how much like do people, do those sorts of people walk around, just look for sustainable suppliers? Like, is that really like a driver or do people just kind of, you know, there's so much that now maybe people just try to glaze over it. And you know, it's, it, I'm curious how much some of that stuff actually made a, made an impact or not to make someone stop at their booth. I had, I can remember one or two people walking up and just saying, what do you have that's bio-based? You know, like a couple of people were there just looking for things like that. But I, I don't know. I think that, that there was a lot more talk about it and, you know, branding around it than there actually was uh, business being done around it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We saw that slide deck that just came out where someone shared with us a couple of days ago that, you know, one big supplier that pulled customers just on sustainability mm-hmm. and which buzzwords are most important, what companies are doing. It's it's amazing how much that that comes up more and more now. You see, you see, like approaches. a segment of our customers that their whole discussion topics and everything are around sustainability. I mean, it's probably only ten percent, mm-hmm. and they're always looking for something that they can grab onto sustainability wise, and um, and then you get success, but then you, the cost comes in, and they go, oh, "No, no, we can't do that." You know, uh, yeah. it's 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 a slow it's a slow pro- progression thing with sustainability yeah. and you know and people have to accept that you know life is going to go on you're still going to need trucks to deliver you're still going to need rail cars to deliver you're still going to need vessels to deliver but just throwing the buzzword on there i you know you, to your point i don't know how much that gets but um it's sort of gotten genericized by that and i think that's a shame because sustainability is important and yeah. you know doing the right thing in your business is really important and just to, to generically market it that's throwing a, a bad a, a bad you know aura on the whole thing right right yeah it's been more like some of these booth examples like you know what it's all good and great to promote what you're doing but what are you actually doing don't just throw some of these words up there like we're sustainable because we're doing x and there's this number attached to it and like, right, put a little right. bit of specifics on there right you know, to really showcase what you're doing but, but in that in that powerpoint that we looked at the most important thing was uh performance of the products mm-hmm. that was number one and second to that was price you know so you know if you're out there even throwing all these buzzwords out if you've got a very high performing product with a good price you're winning yeah in every event yep. in any case yep. so it was interesting slides yeah absolutely well, so it's nice to be back and have some of these trade shows behind us. Um, and obviously, you know, you, you leave some of these shows and being at the show is all fun and you walk around and talk to people and have dinners and all that's all good and great. But obviously, you know, I think you said it once or twice too, like, you know, you, you leave these shows and that's actually when the work starts, you know, following up right, on people. Right. And now's the time to, uh, you know, follow up on all that. And, you know, whether it was existing customer meetings you had or new folks or whatnot, now's the time to, to work on that. So getting back into some actual sort of sort of work stuff, obviously, uh, mid-May, so we're kind of right in the middle of Q2 here. Um, you know, it seems like demand's kind of been okay across the board. Um, I think you kind of worded it interestingly that, you know, maybe it looks like orders can be off a little bit, but stuff seems, still seems busy. You know, people are still talking mm-hmm. about things, looking at, you know, supply for the next couple of months and things like that. So was, I thought that was a good good take on kind of what we're seeing. Yeah, it's a little weird right now. It's, there's um, there's downward pricing on some raw materials and then there's you know very sharp upward pricing on others due to outages and things like that so um i think i don't know i think demand is softer than it maybe appears but based on the activity because we're seeing a lot of activity around things that are tight and you hear people are air freighting you know products from china and paying you know crazy money for that but um it's i don't think it's as demand driven as it is you know supply Supply lack of supply driven Yeah. yeah it seems like that will continue more more so more often more likely than not you know barring any crazy economic changes or geopolitical changes you know there's a lot of eyeballs on you know interest rates and things like that which may potentially drive demand for housing you know seems like automotive's doing relatively well but you know haven't seen any crazy uptick in demand from that segment it seems like so it seems like the supply side will continue kind of dictating 
supply and demand for a while to come here? I think demand is pretty weak for an election year. I agree with AJ. Yeah. I think that uh, a lot of this is being driven by um, the impact of globalization. And, um, you know, let's take one example, TMA, trimolytic acid in hydride. Um, this product uh, was supplied by three Chinese producers and one American producer. That American producer went out and we're being very well taken uh, advantage of by the Chinese now. They're bidding us against our own customers at times or our you know partners and things like that they're they're canceling orders so there's you know there's a problem with that and it's compounding and so same with you know things like the oq outage which they just came back up in europe i mean you know these outages are driving um incremental um and maybe um fake demand at times where people are just grasping for things and driving the costs up and things like that freight as well from from china and the, we're still suffering with the panama canal the red sea so it's having a really big impact on the fight against inflation and um and inflation is stabilized if not going back up a little bit and that's giving some pushback to interest rate de reductions and that's kind of concerning because then we're in stagflation and we're just stuck here and high interest rates and that's not good for the economy as a whole yep. um but yeah uh there's a lot of concerning things going on right now the ukraine war is not going well the funding just came in israel and palestine the things that are happening over there i mean you know the red sea the you know there there's a lot of craziness right now so that again is impacting our products due to globalization because we're a global uh, player in, in these products. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add on to the China piece too, obviously we're kind of ongoing watching what's happening with some of the tariffs and things like that. The, uh, what is it, the 301 exemptions are still set to expire at the mm -hmm. end of this month as far as you've you've seen? They're still set to expire. Um, you know, the, the if you remember last time around, the, the government was gracious enough to give us a five-day yep. uh, heads up on yep. December 26th. They announced that they'd be extending it. Up know. from, I think, two days for the last time. So, yeah. we're, you know, we're widening that gap a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, so I'm expecting to have less than a week heads up coming into the end of this month. Um, we, yep. It should get extended. I don't see any reason why, why it wouldn't. I haven't seen any language around anybody uh, pushing back or any kind of, you know, movement around that. So I think it should be extended, but we'll uh, continue to keep an eye on it. I think I saw this morning that there was some new tariffs announced focusing on electric vehicles from mm. uh, from China, whether that's cars or batteries or semiconductors or whatnot. So it's like, a I think, 10 or 15% of the overall dollar amount of goods that were t uh, tariffed in the first round. But it'd be interesting to see how that maybe plays a role into whether or not things are extended or... Uh, obviously how that impacts you know the auto industry moving forward so yeah big big discussion at npe was the tariffs coming into mexico now on products so 39 percent, 35 percent, i think was a number that was thrown out there um so they're just trying to mirror a lot of um what the u.s is doing and maybe going a little further sure. as far as the uh, electric vehicles i mean i think the name of the company was like mongoose or something they came out with this little electric car recently it's like twelve thousand bucks and the price is coming down from there Europe is seeing a tidal wave of electric cars from China. Yep. So this is a big concern for everyone, um, you know, because, you know, the, the auto industry is certainly very, very important for um, America and Europe and many countries. So sure. um, so I think you're, you're also seeing some some walls being built in Europe as well uh, to, to, to push back on the, the, the tidal wave of imports from, from China. That Mexico tariff is like a potential, like they're discussing potentially doing a tariff like that? or No, I think it's actually it on actually? So certain products. They already had oh, like, wow. like DOP, for example. Yeah, you know, DOP, phthalic, ethanolamines. Yes. Um, it wasn't a big list of chemicals, but the, the, there's a list of all other goods on there as well. Hmm. That's the 35% significant tariff you know i mean 10 yeah. percent more than even ours you know right. and i think there's also duty on top of it possibly so you know that uh, along with six seven thousand dollar container freight from china to to mexico right now is you know yeah it's creep, supporting inflation it's creep, creeping <laughs> back up there it really is yeah yeah, and it's only a matter of time before Europe follows suit, right? You, you'd they imagine. have to do something. I yeah. think uh, Great Britain's already started to do. They put their walls up a little bit, you know, as far as this. But the rest of Europe, you know, the EU, it takes a really long time for them to get anything going with all the bureaucracy there. But they're starting to realize they really got to do something right now. Yep, yep. 
Um, well, obviously being mid-May, we're kind of seeing a lot of folks that are announcing their Q1 results and how kind of businesses and things like that. Um, it seems like a lot of mixed results from a lot of people. Um, you know, I think everyone kind of agrees the same. You know, demand's been pretty flat. People, I think folks that are reporting growing um, profits is more so from, you know, we're seeing a lot of companies that are trying to cut back on things and maybe, you know, having job cuts and things like that to support some of these profit margins. Um, you know, the stock markets had a pretty good run for the first uh, four or five months of the month, you know, or first five months of the year, um, up anywhere from five to 10%, depending which indicator you look at. Um, so it's been interesting to see kind of how Q1 started. And I think people were not very excited about the year for this year coming up when, when we back in January and it's been a decent start to the year it seems like by a lot of these indicators so be interesting to see kind of where we go from here you know, I, I know we had talked a lot at the coding show and NPE you know with people that are at the plant level and you know hiring remains a big concern trying to keep people in jobs and keep plants running and things like that that seems like one of the biggest sort of handcuffs to uh, trying to grow a business in a lot of cases so a couple different things to sort of keep your eye on in terms of how how business proceeds for the second quarter. Yeah, we saw a lot of like uh, layoffs in, in Q1 and, and trickling into Q2 uh, because that's how long it takes for these big companies to really see what happened last year, yep. you know, in terms of their financials. And they went, oh my gosh, you know, last year was horrible. Yep. So I think that you're going to see some more of that, you know, uh, as people really, um, you know, grapple what last year was and it was a chemicals recession. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that'll – and it, it, very interesting lately is watching the markets in Europe and the and the markets in Asia really improve. So that's – you know, that gives you some confidence uh, going forward that there's going to be, you know, driving demand and pickup in demand. But if we're having, like, all these sort of isolated issues that are starting to compound, you know, what's going to happen when, when the demand picks up in, in those geographies and – and, and we continue to have uh, breakage, outages, rationalizations, things like that. It's, it should be a very interesting. Yeah, you hear, you know, companies that are looking at trying to sell or close different business units or sites. I saw that email from Steve that OQ had appointed a chief restructuring officer, which yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. points a lot well, they to overseeing. They got a billion dollars in debt to deal with, <laughs> so yeah, they need to have, you know, so, so the, there, there needs to be more reactiveness if you will, in our government. Like right now, Ineos is down. They're not making TMA anymore. We got to bring it in from China. They should be like on this, like drop the tariff. Okay, there's no domestic production. Yeah. Boom, drop the tariff. But they're giving us three, five days uh, a car, of our carte blanche tariffs before it's going to end or continue. Well, I mean, it's like, been exempt for, what, two years now? Like it's, it's not like it's a new, yeah. new thing. Yeah. In the beginning of this year, we had this run on AI technology. Where is this AI technology to kind of figure this stuff out? You know, be a little yeah. bit more, you know, reactive. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're going to fund Ukraine, do it. Don't just wait <laughs> six months and argue about it and throw things at it. And, yeah. you know, like if you're going to do it, do it. If you're not going to do it, don't do it. You know, so I don't know. It's uh, yeah. It's frustrating. We're in a very rapid world, yet some it's, stuff is painfully, oh, painfully slow. So slow. Yeah. Um, well, I think overall, you know, mirroring what we've seen from the coding show and NPE and some of these reports and things like that, it seems that the U.S. continues to outpace other regions. You know, you mentioned a little bit of pickup in places like Asia, um, but I think the U.S. clearly still is kind of doing better on a, on a day-to-day basis where we are now versus, you know, the U.K. and Europe and things like that. Um, there's some concerns in China for the long term, but, you know, seeing things sort of pick back up here in the, in the short term has been good. So a lot of eyeballs, I think, on the U.S. We'll continue to see a lot of folks trying to place product here and you know, I think there's a lot of a lot of optimism for where we're to go in the summertime. We're lucky that there was just so much money printed at the end of COVID and, and you know a- after COVID. I mean there is just so much money that is still around in the system yep. because right now I'm dealing with our bank and it's another world, you know, it's almost better to go get your money from the mafia and risk your life, you know, because <laughs> the rules are ridiculous yeah. and they're, you know, it's not even the interest rates. You know, if you're a business line of credit right now, you're paying eight, eight, eight and a half percent. It's not just that. It's the rules that they're going to, you know, come up with in order to, you know, give you a loan or a line of credit or a mortgage or, you know, even, you know, the car companies have their own, uh, more, you know, um, finance company. So they're lower. But like, you know, you look at somebody who wants to go buy a home right now, you know, the homes are... It, at peaks right now in terms of cost, yep. 
people are unable to afford the home that they just bought five years ago now. And you got to go out and finance that at 8%, 7%, you know, whatever it is. It's, um, it's restrictive, you know. Absolutely. Um, and then there's just more rules coming out of the government all the time. They're just throwing rules at us all the time. IRS rules, these rules, that rules. So it's like they're restricting us and they're just throwing rules at us and there's more enforcement. And it's like it's kind of an ugly picture right now, you know. Yep. Well, you mentioned obviously things being a little bit slower than normally they would be for an election year, but obviously coming into the summertime, I know we were talking kind of in our weekly meeting about sort of priority products and kind of products that are typically in higher demand than others. I know we talked obviously about plasticizers a bit, mm-hmm. um, kind of being typically a busy time of year for that one, maybe not as busy as we would have hoped with, you know, housing and wire and cable and things like that being a little bit slower than expected. But mm-hmm. I think in, in general, that seems to be the kind of hot product category these days. Yeah. And then the TMA goes into TOTM for 105 degree wire and you can't really get it for very cheap anymore. You're talking, you know, over $3 a pound now uh, for the Finnish Ester TOTM. Um, and it's going to get worse coming into July, August. It's a integral part of the compound or, or the jacketing. So you need it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even though that's been a highlight, there's a lot of problems in that supply chain. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's kind of general purpose plasticizers doing well these days. The IMP, obviously, always a popular one. Nine Eleven. Um, what else is what else is? Uh, DPHP, DPHP, DOTP, well. DINP. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's government restrictions still that's trickling out there. People are looking at DOTP now more um, as um, you know. Uh, a very generic plasticizer people are getting upset with the performance of it in certain products they're looking to add products to improve the performance and then there's a massive uh, dumping investigation against um you know uh, poland and uh, reopening for korea and a few other because there was some very irresponsible marketing of dotp sure. coming in and the domestics bsf uh, specifically eastman has said hey this is unfair Things are happening here. We need to reopen this. So there's going to be uh, some pressure on importing um, DOTP, I think, at, at some point here in the future. Already there's been a judgment that there's been an impact. So it's just a matter of how much additional uh, duty will be placed on which countries' right. uh, origins of these products. So yep. um, DIMP has some wet head, headwinds, you know, in terms of being a phthalate, but people who are using it are, are very happy and able to use it. The products they're making are very, very good. Um, and then there's a lot of specialty products that you can put in things like uh, DOTP that, that can improve it, like benzoates that we offer. Um, these will certainly improve the performance of the products very very well but they you know they have a cost um it's it's not just a generic formula then you look at eso this is a product that is made throughout the country right now but it's a buck a pound it's up there you know in price like that used to be a secondary because it was cheap right but now soybean oil is very expensive so you know it's only being used to as a chlorine scavenger in, in some applications it's not like being used as a secondary like it used to but there you go. That's the plasticizer the <laughs> matrix for, for the springtime. So demand's been okay. Yeah. Not like it normally is. Yep. Well, even though he's not here, you can send Javi a WhatsApp to, uh, <laughs> what's on, what's for, on all, me. for all your plasticizer needs. Um, looking at it, we talked a little bit about, you know, oil and gas and things like that. You know, everything seems like it's been pretty flat. We saw kind of a drop in the stock market and then things have kind of come back up and, um, you know, net flat since the last time we recorded, um, you know, oil sitting in the high seventies, natural gas went from about a dollar 70 to about the two thirty range, kind of where we're sitting now. Um, benzene stayed at higher levels than maybe we were anticipating this time, uh, this time last recording, kind of sitting in that four dollar range there so see what happens for the weeks and months to come there yeah benzene's staying firm they're saying on uh low gasoline inventories here in the u.s and then also um logistics you know and and, you know with with delays and things like that because of the red sea it's it's you know not getting imports here as fast as uh you know folks would have thought so it's keeping those prices kind of firm up above four bucks which will obviously keep uh, a dipic pricing relatively flat in in theory for now yeah there there's some talks of benzene possibly decreasing going into june when when they you know reassess how you know the gasoline stocks and things like that and as uh imports start to trickle in um benzene's supposed to come off but um 
you know, we'll see we'll see how that shapes up. Yeah, and the different business has been pretty good recently, it seems like. Demand's been, been okay for Demand's the- been okay, yeah, across the board for esters and coatings and things like that. Our, domestic, our, our dipic uh, demand has been has been okay here in the U.S. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, we saw propylene come way off since the last time we recorded. Um, I think the, the contract dropped about 10 cents. Um, but other than that, that's nothing super exciting happening on the energy side, it seems like, these days. Those are the highlights. Nothing you're keeping a keeping a close eye on other than that. Natural gas, surprisingly, that 170 to 230. I mean, it's you know that's a well 20, 30, 40 percent increase. You know, I mean that's a, yeah. a pretty sizable increase. I've been watching that go up a little bit, and then um, oil moderating in the low 80s. Um, gas prices and, and diesel prices seem to be pretty flat. Um, so no, no, nothing, no highlights in terms of raw materials. The benzene oil impact. A Dipic, styrene, malaic, things like that across the board. So um, it's surprising to see how high that is. But I think arbitrage just opened up with Korea. So it looks like we might see some product flowing this way, and maybe that will impact the price of benzene. Yep, yep. Well, now that we have the uh, sort of major spring trade shows behind us, we've got a couple coming up over the couple months. I mean, obviously summertime, I think usually a little bit quieter over time for trade shows and things along those lines, but a couple of things coming up over the next couple months. So, yeah, so we have Sampy this, uh, actually next week, next um, week out in California. So we'll have a booth, um, TCC, t- uh, Tim Driscoll will be there um, representing the TCC team. Uh, and yeah, that. I've never been out to that one, but it seems like that's going to be a great, great a, one to be at. You didn't go to that, right? That was Camex, the one you went out to on the West Coast? Or was it good, I always get those two mixed up. They're very yeah. similar shows. That I think it was Camex that I yeah. I was at before. Yeah. But obviously, yeah, we're doing a booth and be a very composites-focused show for uh, for us at least. So it should be interesting to see what kind of feedback we get from that one. Yep. And then we've got the Southeastern Chemical Conference in Myrtle Beach um, early June. I think we've got... Corey Mullins and Steve Friedwald going out to that. Uh, Chemicals America, late June in Savannah, Georgia. That's always a good one for us, as we talked about earlier in the in the podcast. Um, there's a handful of us going out to that. We'll have a booth. Um, we've already started to set up meetings and line up, you know, things with customers, suppliers. So that'll be good, even though it's a smaller size. I think it's all, you know, relative to the scale of the show um, and what we get out of it. Uh, the Southwestern Fertilizer Conference piggybacks that mid-July in Nashville. Um, so that'll be another good one uh similar crew going out to that um and we've got we're starting to fill up the meeting schedule believe it or not i feel like you know coming into we usually talk afpm and things of that nature kind of stacking meetings but i think we've started to do a good job at you know filling up the schedule and and you know getting things on the books that you know are meaningful and and building that up which is great and then we're looking out to epca in berlin this fall so um benny i think you're going rob Mm -hmm. you're going as well um so yeah it's some good stuff i mean i know we always talk about the summer slowing down but there's a lot of good stuff that's still in the pipeline to to round the year out I've already had people ask, like, oh, are you going to EPCA this year? Like, yeah, I mean, I haven't booked anything yet, but I'm <laughs> planning on it. Like, people are, people are planning this year, apparently. Um, hey, it's never a bad thing to, to plan. No. I mean, <laughs> coming, coming from the be, planner that's, herself. That's, that's going to be on your headstone one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you in charge of writing okay. a cover <laughs> caption for that. Um, um, but yeah, getting back to, you know, some of these kind of easier to manage, you know, two-day type shows. Um you, know, you get a lot done in a relatively short period of time. These things are usually pretty targeted and well attended. So excited to get back to uh, some of these sorts of smaller shows coming off a uh, you know coding show in NP and AFPM. Be nice to have some more manageable manageable travel. Yep. Well, we have a uh, kind of our coding show recording uh, coming up after this. Um, any other kind of final thoughts or notes for the? for the group here. I know we've got our sales meeting coming up next week, so it'll be nice to see a lot of the TCC folks, especially those that are not based here in the office that we don't see all the time, you know, up in Providence for a couple of days of meetings and dinners and things like that. Um, maybe celebrating a few impending retirements, which we'll talk about at a later date. Um, but we're looking forward to seeing everybody next week. Absolutely. Definitely. Should be a good time. Yeah, yeah I well. think so. Um, well, with that, we'll, uh, so obviously as part of our coding show booth, we, uh, we had the kettle bottom guys down there to do a little recording, had a couple, uh, ep- mini episodes we recorded with a couple of folks down there. So the, uh, end of or second half of this episode will be some of those chats from the coding show. So with that, we will give it over to some of the recordings from the coding show and, uh, we will see you guys on the next episode. 
Sounds good. Awesome. Thank Sounds Thank great. You. Thanks, Benny. Thanks, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. We are live from the 2024 American Coding Show. We have our first victim or guest, if you will, of, uh, <laughs> of, of, the, of the conference here. Uh, we have Neral Seth from HV2 Enterprises. Uh, Neral is the VP of HV2 Custom Grinding and Processing. Yes. You got that right? I yes, that you, is true. Good. Thank you, for, uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on. It's good to see you. Hey, good to see you again. Uh, this, is, this is a great show. Um, thank you for calling me on your podcast. I, I hear your podcast all the time, and I really enjoy the way you guys uh, uh, talk about the business, talk about uh, the future and everything. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Uh, obviously, just getting uh, just getting started with the show here. Um, but what do you have coming up for the next couple of days here? What are you what are you keeping an eye on here for the show? So, uh, very good question. Uh, this is my first time in American coding show, uh, but uh, we have some plans. Uh, we I personally put down few points that I wanted to cover throughout the show. Uh, that is a that, that is we are the the job we are doing is very unique. We sure. are doing custom grinding, basically we are doing jet milling and polarizing, and there is enough demand for uh, PE wax and uh, some uh, chemicals to grind it down to the micron size. So we are we are we are approaching the special distributors like you and others uh, manufacturers who really like to have the. Uh, services like um, repackaging or blending or especially the polarizing so nothing special uh, we have some uh, couple of meetings uh, uh, on the on the on the book but other than that uh, we're just going to enjoy the show and the weather of course yes it is <laughs> it is much nicer than it is uh, down in new england yes. so uh, and you guys are remind me just one location in the in the philly area correct uh, we are close to uh, allentown lehigh valley okay. um, we are in Eastern. There is one location we have, which is around thirty-five to forty thousand square feet. Sure. Uh, which includes the warehouse and production area. Sure. Nice. Yeah, I know we've done uh, we've done some business together, and we're yes. you know we've got a lot of things in the pipeline, in the pipeline that we're yes. working on getting going. So we've we've certainly appreciated the relationship thus far. Um, how's how's business been for you guys in general? What are you seeing? Obviously, I know there's maybe a lot of people doing some new production and trying to get creative with their supply chains in some cases and things like that. So what are the what are the trends you guys are seeing in your business for the first uh, couple months of the year here? Well, very interesting uh, and again i'm not an expert to talk about it sure. but i'll still uh, say what i see in our business uh, last year uh, i think uh, business were down uh, i think there was a uh, feeling about into the market that uh, the economy is going down and uh, people were scared and the market was not market was fluctuating fluctuating more than it's supposed to be so i think the last year economy and the business were down, but this year we see very uptrend. Uh, we get busy since uh, January and till now. We are, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, projects piped up uh, in our production area. So we, we are busy, we are yeah. busy. And uh, for next couple of months, our, our production is kind of a poked um, and I hope this trend will continue. Yeah, yeah. Hey, sold out. Sold out's a good thing, especially <laughs> exactly. after, like you said last year, with how, you know things being quieter and whatnot. Yes. Uh, you know, if you're if you're booked up and sold out, that's a that's a good problem to have. Good problem to have. And are you seeing folks? You know, when people are coming to you to work on projects, is it like a brand new product they're introducing to the market, or they're looking to replace something that they're having difficult with imports? Do you have a feel for kind of that, what, what, that, when people come to you with an opportunity, what you know right. why that started? And, and and this is a very good question because this is the same thing I'm also trying to do analyze in my business that what as a as a customer I and mean, as a business what we are attracting more sure. as a new business or someone is not satisfied with their current suppliers. Um, I'm not not gonna talk. I'm not gonna be uh, say that we are we are really good compared to our competitors. But I see that a lot of a uh, lot of our customers. So seventy or sixty percent of our new customers are uns uh, not satisfied with their current suppliers. Sure. So that's why they are coming with us. And yep. the major thing that they realize with us is basically we give them a very personal treatment. Um, sure. Sure. It uh, does, it, does it, is if is it uh, samples, if is it uh, on time delivery. But we are giving them very personal services, and that's why they are coming with us. Sure. And they're, I mean, we are new in the uh, marketing. We we never did the marketing for last 20, 22 years. Yeah, yeah. So they they come to us and say that why we never heard about you, and uh, that's why we are here now. We are going. Uh, company to company and tell them about our story and sure. what our capacity what can we do so sure. 
uh, yes, major chunk of new customers or new um, business is kind of unsatisfied customers from other suppliers. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you look at everybody in their own personal lives, you get used to things like Amazon delivering to your doors. Like exactly. you, you get used to a certain level of ease and customer service and you kind of expect that when you go back to the business world, you Absolutely. know? So when Absolutely. you we can offer personal service and, and, you know, timely responses and things like that, that's it, pe people and just people's nature, they expect that kind of service from things. And, uh, and it matters a lot because yeah. uh, the whole production is relying on the, our, our responses, especially sure. if we respond very late or if we say, oh, we cannot do this or that, uh, that production suffers a lot. So we right. try to make it happen, whatever we can, yep. and that's what makes us special uh, yep. from other other suppliers. And in some cases, I'm sure you guys are the last step between, you, know, you have a finished product and you have a customer and you guys need you to repackage it or grind it, whatever it is. So, so you're the last step to actually deliver the product, Absolutely. you know, so there's a lot of, and, lot of stress and, on you there. And that's a very <laughs> good point because um, we are not we are not a manufacturer, sure. right? So we are a toller, and uh, most of the time, customer sends the material to us. Uh, it gets repack or grind. It goes directly to their customer. So we are the last resource. So we have to be very careful on the labels and uh, uh, how the shipment looks, uh, sure. the, whether it is. Uh, uh, shipment is properly secure in the truck or yep. not, and things yep. like that. So we have a thorough process. We are putting down a lot of efforts to make sure that the customer's customer is happy. Sure. So we are happy. Right, right. What's uh, what's one thing you wish every one of your customers knew, or if, if, if you could tell every, if, if you had your customers undivided attention, what's one thing you, you want them to understand about your world and the process and how things work? Right. Um, this is, uh, this, uh, this, this is a very uh, common thing comes to us, is customer doesn't, un uh, doesn't know about what it takes to give them a trial. Okay. Uh, especially when you're doing polarizing, when, especially when you're doing a repack. Sure. Uh, you cannot uh, see how the repack is going to go if is it very special, very typical, or especially the polarizing or jet milling because every chemical uh, reacts differently. Sure. sure. So um, it's always a challenging job for me uh, to convince customer to give me uh, let's say 50 pound, 100 pound, or 200 pound for trial, and especially during the trial when you lose the material around 30 pound or 40 sure. pound, yeah. which is part of the process because now you are taking trials and you are trying to make sure that you are meeting those specifications. So sometimes you're going to lose those 40 pounds or 50 pounds, and then it becomes a part of the discussion why you have why right. you lost uh, 50 pound, and then I have to convince them that this is just a trial. In trial, it happens. Uh, in, sure. uh, in actual production, in jet milling, you don't lose more than one person. So Sure. So generally, after that, customer becomes happy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I know you're uh, you're at every trade show that happens. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> but how do people get in touch with you, or where can people find you? Uh, most of the time by email. Sure. Uh, but uh, being in a trade show for the last uh, two years, on on almost every trade show that I can think about, yep. um, a lot of people knows knows me very personally now. Um, so whenever we go to the trade shows, we talk about the projects that we left from. Sure. Uh, and uh, most of the time, I like to talk to customers by uh, phone rather yeah. than email because right. phone brings that the third dimension, which I which I feel like it always lost lost in emails that um, about a little bit more details, sure. right? Sure. So yes, emails are great for yep. specification and things, but whenever I have any questions, I generally pick up my call and sure. and call the customers and hey, say hey, this is this is something we wanted to talk about and right. let's talk about right. it. So awesome. Well, we appreciate you taking some time to uh, come chat with us. Hope you have a good uh, rest of the show here, and uh, maybe we'll have you up uh, at the studio in Rhode Island here sometime soon. Thank you, Van. Yes, awesome. I'm looking far for that. Awesome. Thank you. Great to see you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. We are live from the American Coding Show here in Indianapolis 2024, and we have our very special guest, Mr. Todd Jones, returning to the podcast. Morning, Todd. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on the podcast, Ben. Oh, we're happy to have you. <laughs> happy to have you. Uh, now, I'm going to see if I can get this correct. Todd currently is the regional sales manager and what was the second half? Uh, global key account manager. With uh, Perstorp. Is it, is it Perstorp, a Petronas company, or is it still Perstorp, just Perstorp for these days? Uh, a subsidiary of Petronas Chemicals Group. And that's obviously a relatively new transition you guys are still working through here? Yeah, a little over a year. So, yeah, we're starting to meet some of the people from Malaysia, uh, interact with them at various events. Yeah, all very positive. Yeah, good. Good. Obviously, you know, 
fits you guys into this larger organization with maybe access to some new products and regions and things like that. So I'm sure it's a interesting global transition here over the last year or two. Yeah, don't hold me to the numbers, but I, th <laughs> I think we're like 1,600 people joining 46,000. So yeah, a little different. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, obviously we're uh, kicking off day one here at the coding show. What's the uh, what's the what's the general move from folks this week? What are the big things you're focusing on here while you're while you're at the show? Yeah, I think it's positive. Uh, looks like attendance is pretty good. Uh, as far as you know, our products, we've got some very mature products in the polyol space that we sell into the resins and coatings. Uh, we've got our plasticizers. Uh, we've got our sustainability message uh, with the pro grades of almost all of our all of our products. Um, some of the purchasers I talked to ahead of the show seem to be uh, very concerned with supply from their supplier base, and uh, maybe we're very busy trying to uh, address the squeakiest wheels sure. in their supply base. Sure. Yeah, we're definitely back to a, a time where, you know, supply and production issues and outages and issues getting freight from A to B is, is driving, seems like supply and pricing more so than maybe a big robust demand push these days. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely seeing demand pick up and, you know, that's positive after, you know, the second half of last year with all of the destocking. Sure. Um, you know, now I think it, the demand and the order books are more reflective. Of, of the real demand, uh, if people are consuming a product, they need to go out and buy it. They're sure. not just pulling it out of a warehouse. Yep, yep. Um, and so specific to the coding space, what are some of the big products you're, you're talking to folks here this week? Obviously, I know we've done the, the email team 100 DPHP for a long time and have been working on the right, Pebble, right. and I'm sure both those are big ones for you this week. Yeah, they're big ones, especially with you and the people uh, involved with the plasticizers. Again, our polyols, you know, pentaryl, uh, trimethylol propane, those are big ones where we're the only producer in the Americas, uh, also a very large importer of both. So if you take those products and then some of the special specialty derivatives of those products, that really keeps us busy here. Sure, I believe it. I believe it. I know we've had a, a handful of conversations already this morning with folks coming and asking us specifically what our you know, bio-based or sustainable products and portfolio looks like. I'm, I'm sure that's a continued conversation for you guys. You're getting more and more people actually looking at approving and looking at, you know, like Prevalent and Pevalent Pro, obviously, I'm sure are big products for you here with the sustainability push. Yeah, it really is. And if you remember my initial presentations on this, maybe some of the reaction was, oh, you're kind of too early. Um, the world isn't ready for this. Now it's really changed a lot where you have people that have defined their scope three goals. Uh, some of the major paint companies and other companies have created their baselines. Sure. So they know basically without a baseline, you can't measure your improvement. Right. And now people have that and a lot of traction, um, you know, with upper management of these companies. Good. So. Now, if we can just get out of this cost crunching, <laughs> uh, if yep. we can get out of that mode, um, you know, there's some real value there. Sure. What are your uh, What are your big talking points for Q2 here? You think some of these supply outages we're seeing in in Europe and you know upstream issues are going to continue driving you know kind of supply and demand for the for the quarter, or what are some of the big things you're seeing here for the next couple months? Yeah, I think getting getting the right products to the right parts of the world, and you know, you've got some shipping disruptions. Sure. Um, inventory adjustments and then for us while we're not really facing outages we can see some outages of competitors products but also products that complement our products sure. so you know when you really look at it if you need to use product a with product b and product b is not available you know how do you sell product a? right your, so. your 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 availability or your price for product it doesn't matter if they don't need it if they can't use right, it right right so well, cool. Any other uh, any final notes, thoughts, considerations here for, uh, for the coding show? No, uh, thank you for having me on, and obviously we'll see each other next week yeah, at another sir. show. It seems to be what we do these days. Tis the season. Tis the season. I was right. in Louisville a week or two ago, so I saw some people last week or two weeks ago, and then this week and next week, but it's trade show season. I like it. You can see a lot of people in a short period of time. It kind of limits travel a little bit. You can get a bunch done in, in one place. Indy's not a bad city for it, so I don't mind it. No, not at all. Trade show season. Yeah. 
Um, well, we appreciate having you on. Great as always. And uh, we will we'll talk to you soon, Todd. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. We are recording live from the 2024 American Coding Show. We got our, I guess, our first podcast guest of the day here for Wednesday, Mr. Steve DeCastro. Steve, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Oh, thank you, man. How are we doing? I'm doing great. You got the logos and the shirts. You got the logos, my, get everything going. Making the marketing and me proud there. That's it. Um, first time on the podcast as well? First time on the podcast. So we, we had to come all the way to Indianapolis to get yeah, you on there. Yeah, <laughs> my, my hope is the camera doesn't break. <laughs> it won't, it won't, it won't. Um, so obviously new to the podcast, why don't you give a little intro on your background? And, yeah, uh, I've been with uh, TCC now over six years, I think. Um, I came from the paint and coatings world. Um, I came from working for a large paint and coatings corporation, RPM. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for one of their divisions and um, did uh, a lot of pr procurement work for them. Sure. And um, so been in the paint and coatings world, like I said, 40 plus years, been coming to this show forever, it yep. seems like. Yep. And it's great to come here and see friends from the past and sure. meet new friends and whatever. So it's always, uh, I always like running into everybody and uh, uh, catching up on old things we used to do and new things and try to form new relationships. and. It's great because the relationships that you've formed over the past uh, continue. And the industry is as big as it is and as big as the paint and coatings industry is, the, uh, the re relationships seem to always stay. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been funny. It's been obviously having, great having this big booth space and whatnot and hanging out the booth. And it seems like there's a never-ending cycle of people coming over and shaking your hand like, oh, it's so good to see you. And, yeah. You know. it's, it, and it's, it's great. It's yeah. uh it's always good. Uh, obviously, we went through some tough times a few years ago when we didn't have the show. Um, sure. But uh, I think we're coming back now, and everyone's uh, mood seems to be pretty upbeat. And uh, I think consumer takeaway is a little soft, but hopefully if interest rates can come down, whatever, that'll improve that a bit. And yep. uh, I think people will be making a lot more paint. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that way. And that was going to be my next question is kind of what the, your, your general mood or takeaway from the you know first day and a half of the show are. It seems like people are cautiously optimistic about things. You know, yeah, I, I think on the industrial side, I think uh, the industrial coating side seems to be doing much better than the consumer side. Yep. Um, and usually that's a sign that the consumer side is going to turn around sometime soon. So sure. I think everyone did so much painting during the time when they couldn't go outside and do whatever. Yeah. That uh, now that they're waiting for for other things to do with their money that they've saved going on vacation and things and not doing a lot of DIY work around the house. Sure. So I think the consumer takeaway is basically uh, kind of taken a little hit on that. But yeah. that it always comes back. It will come back. And, uh, and people are always looking for new opportunities and they're making new products all the time that do do more yeah. and that's and that's great and that's what we try to provide them with sure sure yeah and you've uh you've had some of our newer sales folks tied into some of your meetings uh down here while you've been here you know taking some under your wing a little bit what is uh what have you been trying to instill in in, in luan and some of the newer sales folks and what, what would your advice be to any you know kind of newer folks that are getting into this I industry think, uh, it's all about a relationship that you can have with someone then to be truthful and honest and know that they can depend upon you sure. so it's you have to build trust mm -hmm. and I think once you build that trust and they know that they can trust you I think that goes a long way and people that I run into they tell me all the time you know Steve when you were around and you were buying if we if you gave me your word we knew we could depend on it sure. so you were in that trust and I think that's what I try to instill upon new people getting in whether you're in sales or not it's one of trust and relationship and trying to make sure that they, they, they know that they can trust you and you're, and you're going to stand behind what you do. Yep. And that's what I try to let them know about TCC and the chemical company is that they can, they can trust us. Uh, they don't, security of supply is important to us. Yep. That's the main thing that we try to uh, tell all of our customers that we have product for you. We'll be there for you. Sure. We're, we're, we're going to be there for you all the time. And so a lot of times that's important. Um, sometimes price, obviously you want to be competitive, but to make sure that you know they can depend on you and you're going to have product when they want it, that's the main thing. And when people were working for me and I was in charge of procurement, 
uh, the one thing I always let everyone know is make sure that you don't shut a plant down. Yep. You shut a plant down, we're going to blow the roof off the office building <laughs> because that's not good. So, right. And everyone knows that, and people have been through some difficult times in the past few years, and they kind of know. And we've had a few people come by and say, we've made some mistakes where we just had one supplier only, sure. and we now know that that's probably not a good thing to do. Yep. And so that's uh, and that's that's good, and I would agree with that. I, I think you need multiple levels of suppliers sometimes and guys that you can depend on, and if they know they can depend upon you, maybe they can rely on you more and give you more. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of that just takes uh, takes time, takes some patience. You know, takes you know multiple touch points and dinners and meetings and calls and whatnot. It's you know, it takes time to build some of these relationships, obviously. And it does. It's uh, forty years of building relationships, yeah. and uh, you know, so it, it takes time. And but once uh, w- once they're there, for the most part, they're there forever. Sure. Sure. Well, we're lucky enough to have your 40 plus years of experience here at TCC now. It's well, thank a, you. a big asset. And uh, we'll have to have you on a episode, obviously being local up to uh, yeah. to us in New England. We'll have you at the at the office in James Hanner sometime soon. We won't come all the way to Indy to have you on the uh, on the podcast here next time. Great. So great to have you. And, so, uh, sounds like a plan. It's been a great week. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Good. Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Steve. All right. Material contained on this podcast is provided by the chemical company solely for informational purposes. The information is not guaranteed to be correct, complete, or up to date. The information in the podcast is intended solely as a general education aid. TCC is providing this podcast as a public service, but it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of TCC policy. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by TCC. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by TCC employees are those of the employees and do not necessarily reflect the view of TCC or any of its officials. All statements, comments, and opinions presented are made in the context of robust dialogue and freedom of expression. TCC assumes no responsibility for any consequence relating directly or indirectly to any action or inaction taken based on the information in this podcast. While TCC strives to keep the information in the podcast accurate, complete, and up to date, we cannot guarantee and will not be responsible for any damage or loss related to the accuracy, completeness, or timeliness of the information. TCC assumes no liability for any errors or omissions in the content of this podcast. The information contained on the podcast is provided entirely on an as basis with no guarantees of completeness, accuracy, usefulness, or timeliness. Thank you for streaming the View from Jamestown podcast edition. Like and subscribe for more.